Let us pray. Most gracious God, help us to love others as you love us, to accept others without judgment, to see differences as your gift of creation, to remember that love is our greatest calling. Help us, we pray, to open our hearts and our minds, to learn to love and welcome others as you do. Guide us, Lord, to reach out with compassion to those who suffer in pain or poverty. Lead us to respond without preconditions or reservations, seeking only to serve in your name. This we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you all for being here today. So today's gospel, I believe, is the shortest one I read in the whole year. <laughs> However, as I find with all of Jesus' all that he taught, all of his words are precious, regardless of the quantity. All of his words and teaching cause me to think and search deep within myself as to how I can truly hear how God is speaking to me, shaping me into being a better man, chewing on his words as I listen as to what do I need to hear to nudge me into becoming more Christ-like and much less me-like, much less Harry-like. Today is a very special day for Kathy and I. Today is our wedding anniversary. On this day, <laughs> those applause were for her. <laughs> On this day, July the 2nd, we stood before our families, friends, and the good folk of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Marlton, New Jersey, at the 11 o'clock service, just before communion. We said our vows and became married. Much more happened that day than our public profession of love and commitment to each other. Today's gospel speaks a whole lot about welcoming. And in many ways, Kathy and I welcomed each other into each other's lives. When I reflected upon our journey together, we in very real ways welcomed each other into, com into a completely different life than the lives we had been living separately. That day we walked out of that church and both of us entered into a completely different existence, a different way of living a different way of thinking, of being. We at that moment, although retaining our own identities, careers, our past, a new creation was born. We became us. I believe that's the sort of welcoming Jesus was speaking about today. With the welcoming through Christ comes a realization that we, the people of God, are all committed to each other related to each other in very concrete and visible ways through our baptisms. In that moment, when the baptismal water first touched us, we formally were welcomed into the family of Christ. As in any meaningful relationship, it takes a whole lot of work. I dare say in order to be successful and happy in a marriage, you need to step away from your personal ego and put the marriage first, the family first. Years ago, when I first entered formal ministry, I worked as a chaplain in a psychiatric hospital. My office was across the hall from the unit psychiatrist. He was a young man, about 30 years old. We became friends. One day while eating lunch, he shared that he was excited to be going on vacation, and in a few weeks, going home to his native India. I asked if he had anything special planned he shared that he was going to be married. I was surprised and said, I didn't even know that you were seeing anyone. He went on to share that he had only met his wife-to-be when he was five years old and she was three. I must have looked puzzled. And he then went on to explain of the practice in his culture of arranged marriages and how his family and her family decided that a marriage between the families would be a good thing. He continued to share much about the process and philosophies associated with an arranged marriage. The thing that stuck in my mind the most was he said the most significant thing that would happen to him on that wedding day is that he would commit to the family that he and his soon-to-be bride would create. That was over 20 years ago, 
He is happy with a beautiful family. Now don't get me wrong, I am not a proponent of arranged marriages. The notion of such would smack in the face of everything I learned in the seminary in my marriage counseling classes. Not to mention that even though I'm not the most romantic guy in the room, the entire concept just doesn't work for me. I do, however, think that in many ways, it's the same with being in the family of Christ. We commit in every way into making this family a success, keeping this family together, growing each other and the family into the next generation and beyond. A few weeks ago, I went on a clergy retreat with others here in the diocese in the Church of Delaware, and one of the many discussions centered around growing our congregations. Someone used the phrase, all are welcome. All are welcome into the family of the Episcopal Church. Someone else also shared that many churches, religions, denominations, traditions use that same pitch line, all are welcome, but that it often means something entirely different to them than it does here, where we welcome everyone just as they are. Other churches express a similar, all are welcome, however, they don't add the caveat that all are welcome except they don't share, that once you get in their doors, they will be glad to point out in their opinion what is wrong with you and then tell you how to fix you. We as a faith really need to do and come up with a much better way to differentiate ourselves from those others. Somehow we need to tune up our welcoming, our messaging, to be more clear that all means all are welcome, just as you are. Your, your authentic self is exactly what is needed in this family. This week, we as a nation will be celebrating the 4th of July, our nation's birthday. I am looking forward to the picnic that our community will be having and my personal Independence Day tradition that I do my best to honor each and every year, and that is to eat one hamburger, one hot dog, and at least one deviled egg. <laughs> Perhaps that day, Independence Day would be a good day to consider what Jesus meant in telling us over and over again. Whoever welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. What does it mean to welcome, and how do we do that? What does that look like in our churches, our neighborhoods, and in our attitudes toward each other? For we are Christians first, citizens of the kingdom of God, but we are also living that faith in an American context of both privilege and uniquely American challenges. Jesus in no way said that we have to agree on everything, but he pretty clearly told us to be welcoming. As in a family, sometimes we may have to disagree, to agree that we disagree, as we each live our faith and our daily practice. We people of Christ, the family of God, are called to be welcoming, for in welcoming others, we welcome God. Our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, has often expressed it this way, if it's not about love, it simply is not about God. To me, the message of the cross, the big takeaway of the gospel, is not complex. It all comes down to God is love. God, Jesus loves you, and we are to love one another. Easy to understand, but hard to put into practice. But do not lose heart. You are not in it alone. We're all in this together. You're a member of a very welcoming family. But most important, remember that the God we pray to here has welcomed each of us in our brokenness first so that we can welcome all to where our all are truly welcome, just as we are. Amen. Let, let us pray. Dear God, open our eyes to those around us who need a cold cup of water and kindle our hearts to respond to them in love and action Help us, we pray, to recognize the needs of others without judging. Inspire us, teach us how. Use us to make a difference in our families, our communities, our world. Empower and embolden us to welcome others as you have first welcomed us to be part of your family, to be people of love. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. amen. amen.